Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for joining uh, the Aurora Zones web, uh, webinar, which tonight is focusing on what is considered one of the hotspots in the whole, uh, one of the Northern Lights hotspots in the whole world, Tromsø in Northern Norway. My name is Alistair McLean, and I founded the Aurora Zone about a decade ago. And to this day, it remains the sole UK holiday brand dedicated solely to helping you see the Northern Lights, to maximizing your chances of seeing the Northern Lights. That's all we do, that's all we concentrate on, that's all we focus on. And in those 10 years, we've helped thousands of people actually tick off that number one item on their bucket list, seeing the fabulous Aurora Borealis. Now, naturally, by the nature of my work, I've seen the Aurora myself many times, and it's an experience that it's, it just never grows old. To stand under a cold, black Arctic sky and watch a, the firmament ablaze with swirling colour is just something, it's almost spiritual. And I'm often reminded of what our forefathers must have thought without the benefit of modern science. They, you know, and it's understandable that they might have thought that the lights as gods or the spirits of the departed. Um, and there are so many myths and legends about the Northern Lights. And Northern Norway has always been at the very, very forefront of Northern Lights and human interaction. And it, it wasn't so far north of um, Tromsø in the early 1900s that an incredibly clever chap called Professor Christian Bjerkland, uh, by some genius intuition, worked out that there's a relationship between geomagnetic activity in our atmosphere and the aurora appearing in our night sky. And to further his research, Bjerkland, about four or five miles, uh, hours north of Tromsø, he actually built a research center on top of a mountain, and it's pretty much just a hut. And he and his two assistants spent the winter up there researching the Northern Lights and being battered by blizzards and hurricanes. Um, they even almost got um, the fumes from the coal burner nearly killed them. And indeed, one of the assistants actually died in an avalanche. But such is our fascination with the Aurora Borealis. This is what drives us. In terms of Tromsø, um, I've also been there many, many times. I'll never forget the first time uh, the plane was landing in darkness. And as we neared Tromsø, you saw this glitter of the glittering lights of the city in the darkness. And I imagined the sort of fabulous jewel city of the north. And it is a very, very cosmopolitan place. It's been described as the Paris of the north. And I think given a fantastic restaurant scene, cafe scene, bars, plenty of nightlife, and there's also lots to see and do during the day as well. You're not going to be bored in Tromsø. The one thing I would say about it is that because of those lights, when you want to see the aurora, it is best to get beyond the confines of the city itself. And that's where we come in. That's our big role. And that's why we partnered with some of the best Northern Lights guides in the business in Tromsø, and they will be telling you about their role in our holidays a little bit later on. So I should leave that with them. Um, it's obviously been a strange track time for everybody, but the travel industry has been very badly affected by COVID. And the Aurora Zone, we remain financially robust. But what I would say to everybody is that if you're booking a holiday, whether it's with us or whether it is with somebody else, a competitor, anybody, please, please, please make sure that you have financial protection. Look for the after sign, look for the Atoll logo, look for ATO, look for these kind of things. The chances are, if that sort of cover isn't provided, you could lose a lot of money. And you, if you're abroad, you may have a lot of trouble getting repatriated or have to pay for it yourself. So as I say, it doesn't matter who you boot with, make sure you are covered, please. So I've also been thinking about how we're going to travel in the future. And I think going through airports, there's no getting away from it. Wearing masks is going to become the norm. But people have been wearing masks through airports for decades anyway, as a courtesy to other travellers. And are we really going to let our dreams of seeing the Northern Lights go just because we have to wear a mask for three or four hours? I don't think we are. Um, and similarly, when we're on board the aeroplanes, um, I did some research into this. I was fascinated to find out that airplanes actually use similar filters to those in hospital operating theatres. They are incredibly efficient. 99.97% of microbes are captured by the fantastic filters. So it's contrary to what people may think, a very, very safe environment in which to travel. And then, of course, when you arrive in Norway, you're arriving in what is one of the cleanest countries in the entire world. The air is so pure up there. It's exhausting. It makes you feel so tired if you're not used to it, but it's so pure. 
Um, and outside the city, the population density is it's negligible. There's probably more reindeer than there are people. And I think crucially, uh, there's been COVID cases have been few and far between. I think you're more likely, much more likely to get COVID here or any virus here than you are in the pure environs of Northern Norway. Um, so finally from me, before I pass over to the interesting people, um, we do have some special offers for the people who are offers on our trips to Norway, for the people who are watching this webinar tonight. Um, we're also trying to be as flexible as possible. So if you book by the 24th of September this winter, we will allow we, we will allow you to uh, cancel and get a full refund up to 14 days before departure. We're trying to be as flexible as we can there. There'll be no quibble, no questions. We will just refund you the full amount. Um, we'll be revealing how you can make the most of those offers at the end of the webinar. But for now, please stay and listen to the people who really know Tromsø, our partners over there. And on that note, I will pass you to the guy who will be responsible, no pressure, no pressure whatsoever, for your welfare on our behalf once you arrive in Tromsø, and that is Matt Fredrickson. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Ali. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll start with uh, telling how I entered into travel. Um, so I actually, I entered into travel when I was 14, working at hotels, and after that, um, in Norway, when you're 18, you have to go to the army. So I stayed a couple of years in the army as a canine handler. And once I was finished in the army, I told myself that I will never work in travel. Uh, and my father, who has worked in travel for 20 years, he said, it, you have to do it. Um, you will never regret if you do it. And I have worked in travel now in for 12 years and he was the wise one and it was true. I didn't regret it for one second. And about, uh, I think it's one and a half year ago now, I met uh, Ali and Jono and they introduced me to artists and travel in Aurora Zone. And we started working together about Norway and specifically Tromsø. And I have to say, it's been a very good partnership so far, and I'm really looking forward to the future with them as well. Uh, I have to tell we, of course, we have to talk a bit about COVID. Um, I'll get a bit back to it later as well, but I have to say something that happened when COVID started in Norway in March. Um, the government told us that we couldn't um, sit next to each other on buses. We had to stay one meter um, distance between each other. And it was kind of funny because that was business as usual for us. Um, we are a bit, I would say not close, but uh, at first glance we can be a bit reserved. Um, but once you get to know us, once you get to know one Norwegian, you probably have a friend for life. Uh, and Ali also mentioned that the clean air and there's probably more rain there than there are people. Uh, there's about 14 people per square kilometer in Norway. So personal space is basically ge geography here. So you have a lot of space. I mean, we have the second longest coastline in the world. Only Canada is, um, is, has a longer coastline than us. Uh, when it comes to weather in Norway, uh, we have it's the one thing that's probably hardest to predict. Um, we have four seasons, like most uh, countries, but those four seasons have a tendency to overlap as well. Uh, of course, it depends on where in Norway you are, but and I think it's more stable up north than it is uh, on the west coast, for example. But we have a saying here that there's no such thing as bad clothes, uh, bad weather, it's only bad clothes. So if the weather is bad, just put on some more clothes and you'll be fine. Uh, the, uh, the currency here in Norway is of course the Norwegian Krona, uh, but together with COVID-19, they say that you shouldn't use cash and that's not really a problem here because every instance where you can use money, you can use a credit card. So you will never have the problem where you have to pay with cash. Uh, I think, I don't think I've used cash in Norway for 20 years, so. 
Anyway, uh, we'll move on. Uh, of course, I was thinking when I wrote down what I was going to talk about, I was a bit unsure if I was going to mention Vikings at all, because uh, I know that we have a bit of a different relationship um, in Norway about Vikings than you do in the UK. Uh, but I can assure you that even though we have some of the culture from the, the Vikings back in the era, we do not have the pillaging still. So but we have the great food and uh, the hospitality that the Vikings had. Um, and most, most important is probably the fishing. Um, the fishing has been one of the fish has been one of the most important things in Norway throughout the generations. Um, from the Lofoten fish down to Bergen, where they took the fish through Europe, um, to the salmon, especially after the 1980s when Norwegian chefs convinced the Japanese sushi chefs to use salmon in sushi, uh, which kind of exploded the salmon export from Norway. And it was actually dubbed the Silver Rush. Um, and of course, that's mostly farmed salmon and there's a bit of a different uh, opinion about uh, that. But I've been to several of the salmon farms here in Norway and the quality is top notch. Um, and I mean, Oli, he, I, I'm not sure what else I can say that Oli didn't say about Tromsø because, uh, I mean, he knows it just as well as I do. Uh, <laughs> Tromsø is a fantastic place. It's um, a, a small city, uh, it has fjords around it, mountains around it. And of course, in the winter, you have northern lights. In the summer, you have the midnight sun, uh, which I personally find just as special. Um, there's so many fantastic activities you can experience there. Um, from, of course, the Northern Lights hunts to reindeers, uh, to my personal favorite, which I might be biased since I'm a former canine handler, but huskies are just, just to experience those, and Anneli will tell you more about that later. Um, and also, just the quality of the guides in Tromsø is, I would say, I work with all of Norway and Tromsø is probably without a doubt the best place when it comes to the hospitalities, how the guides are with the guests. They, they really elevate the experience of being there. So, I mean, you can really remember an activity like Northern Lights, but I can assure you when you get home, the one thing you will most likely remember the most is how amazing the guide was. Uh, that was uh, at least how it was for me when I was there the first time. So I'm gonna talk a bit about COVID and uh, what we have done and what we are doing uh, to make sure that you're safe when you travel to Norway. Um, I would say, like I said, Norway, has a lot of space. Uh, it's a part of our geography, and but there's still guidelines that we need to follow. Um, during the summer now, we had the, the opportunity because uh, we couldn't get travelers into Norway, but what we did was we kind of got all Norwegians to travel within their own country. And that did two things. One of them was that the, the suppliers got uh, needed cash flow to survive through the crisis. And the second thing is that we used the Norwegian, Norwegians as guinea pigs so they could, we could test all the, the health guidelines that were set by the, the government and to make sure that when you are doing a, an activity that the chance of getting COVID-19, for example, would be as low as possible. Um, when you come to Norway also, as long as COVID-19 is a case, we will, when you check in, in one of the packages that um, Aurora Zone has, you will get one protective mask per day, which will be included in the package. Um, and also, I would say one of the things that really, it's, it's important to re at least remember is that uh, through Aurora Zone, you have something called an in-destination helpline. Um, when you, if you have any troubles during your travels, you can always call that number or send an SMS through regular SMS or WhatsApp, and we will 
be manning that 24 7 we always do that uh, more if you call it most likely you might end up talking to me so i'll at least try to help to the best of my ability um and yeah there's really all the guidelines that the states as soon as they come up with something new we will we're always one step ahead and just making sure that when you travel to norway we'll make sure that you're safe and I, I'm going to go and now start to introduce the suppliers because they are the, really the ones that do all the magic up in Tromsø. Uh, and the first one we have today is uh, one of my favorite hotels in Norway, if not the favorite. And uh, Ida Romsø, the hotel manager at Claren Hotel The Edge, uh, please take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, so it's been quite a ride. The six last months. Uh, we started off the 12th of March uh, when it's actually been decided that we were going to close the hotel uh, at Easter and we didn't know when we were going to open again. And we ended up being the only hotel open in Tromsø uh, for quite some time. Uh, so we've been through quite a change and a lot of adaptions, uh, but like we do with everything that we do is that we want to be the best and provide the best facilities and uh, have the most secure uh, and best place to be in Tromsø. Uh, and that is also, I think, why we, after a lot of years, managed to be number one on TripAdvisor uh, in Tromsø. Uh, but uh, of course, 12th of March started with quarantining guests and I had 120 of them uh, needed to be quarantined. Uh, it wasn't popular and it was a whole uh, and after it was a whole a lot of uh, work and after a week, our hotel was empty. Uh, and then we needed to adapt to all the new guidelines with that within hours uh, no more buffets uh, no more room cleaning and uh, no more service uh, and our our vision in Clarion hotel is to that we are going to in increase the quality of life for our guests and employees and all of a sudden we didn't have any any employees and no guests uh, so it was quite a struggle um, everything was quite a struggle uh, but we decided that we were going to make the best of the situation uh, and we knew that at some point uh, things would change and we would have to change with them and that's the mentality that we've had uh, starting off and we still have it's that we just need to be ready to change whenever something changes uh, but we also wanted to ensure that we follow all the gui guidelines, uh, even to the more extreme than what's um, recommended, uh, because we did not want to end up with any cases, with any uh, contagious, uh, like we don't want to be any pool of contagiousness, anything like that. So uh, we do. We had to change everything. We had to change how we clean. We had to have our uh, cleaning products tested uh, to COVID-19. And uh, uh, hotel operations, when you go to the detail level, is extremely complicated. Uh, but uh, we've um, done a lot of work uh, on a few people. And uh, all of a sudden, summer came. And everybody decided to travel in Norway, but nobody had booked anything. <laughs> and uh, we needed to change uh, with that uh, and uh, with everything. And um, it's, it's been good. Uh, so it's basically been a constant uh, work of changing and adapting to everything that ha that's happening every day. And we have always said that uh, in the industry that uh, no day is the same, uh, but it has a different meaning now uh, because uh, you have to change routines uh, that are extremely important. 
uh, for the security of the guests, for our employees. Uh, and um, it requires time uh, and it requires a lot of effort. Uh, and we've put uh, in that time uh, an effort. And now we are uh, looking at a market that's in constant change and we're just uh, we're trying to come ahead at some things and trying to follow at the rest. Uh, but uh, we do know uh, and we do always want to increase the quality of life for our guests and our employees so that people feel that when visiting Tromsø you have experienced something uh, that might for a lot of people be once in a lifetime. Um, and that is what is important going into the season of the Northern Lights. We've actually had some Northern Lights already uh, and it's uh, wonderful. It uh, feels like things are going back to normal in a sense of way with fewer guests, but uh, we're really excited for the season. The Mats is a wonderful uh, person to work together with. Uh, and we have, uh, he's a great of, great of value for us. And, and we'll continue to change. And at our hotels all over Norway, in Nordic Choice Hotels, all of our employees that are in direct contact with our guests, they're wearing face masks. We use gloves uh, at the buffets. We change cutlery every 20 minutes. Uh, and there's so many routines that we do every day uh, from cleaning hotel rooms uh, to just uh, inviting, <laughs> saying hi to the guests. Um, but um, we, do as always we aim to please and we aim to ensure that uh, you can come and stay with us and travel come healthy and leave healthy so that's what i wanted to say thank you okay. thank you ada that was great um it gives us a bit of insight in how uh, the life as working at a hotel is compared to to many other like activity companies and uh, for me who sits in the office all day. So <laughs> that's great. Uh, the next up is um, Anneli Lutz from uh, Tromsø Vilmark Center. And she has, uh, like I said, I'm probably biased, but uh, I think when I retire, I will uh, try to apply for a, a, a job at Tromsø Vilmark Center. <laughs> Thank you, Mats. Uh... Yes, I'm Anneli, and I have been working at Tromsø Wilmark Center now for four years. And sorry if I'm getting very excited because I'm the same like Mats. I'm just crazy about the dogs. And uh, now I have four of them at home. Two was two uh, adopted, and two other ones I took uh, just uh, when COVID started for them to have more fun. So, and I really don't want to give them back anymore. So we have to have this negotiation at some point with our company owners, but we will see. Anyway, Tromsø Wilmark Center is a family business um, and run by Tove and her younger son, Torkil. Tove started this company around uh, 30 years ago. And today we are the biggest dog sledding company over here. We have over 300 dogs. Uh, today, they are not all at home anymore because uh, uh, we started a program when COVID started, uh, borrow a body and people from Tromsø all, and all around Tromsø, they came to Wilmark Center and they borrowed a dog. So now uh, I'm uncertain how many dogs we have given out, but during the uh, beginning COVID time, then we uh, gave out around 170 dogs. So we have made so many people happy here also when we had this COVID. So uh, I truly hope that, uh, that we get the dogs back and business can run as uh, full speed again as it was before. But uh, we are all year around companies. So um, we have been actually closed only from mid-March until 1st of June. Then we opened again for local market. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, 
uh, had summer cafe open every day, but today I would like to focus more on winter because winter is uh, almost here. Uh, we are from Tromsø, located 25 minutes, um, uh, approximately 30 minutes driving, but gives us also a very good location for the Northern Lights. So when we have Northern Lights in Tromsø, I'm pretty sure you see them at Wilmark Center also. So I would like to focus on three main tours we have uh, during the winter. Uh, one is Aurora Husky Visit Program. Other one is dog sledding program, and then uh, combined package Aurora camp and dog sledding. So um, uh, if we are talking about this Aurora Husky visit program, it means that we do not chase the lights. We have, have a lot of uh, chasing companies uh, also in Tromsø, but our Aurora Husky visit program means that we take the guests to Wilmark Center, we show them around, we also show the dogs, and uh, hopefully there is a clear sky and you see the lights. Of course, the main focus is on the lights. We uh, tell everything from history to science, uh, and, uh, and we truly hope that, uh, that uh, you see the lights as well. Uh, all our tours uh, include transport uh, from Tromso, normally also meal and also the clothing. So you are covered with all this uh, when you book with Tromso Wilmark Center. So uh, the dog sledding, it's important to remember that we are the only company who offers two different types of dog sledding. We offer the dog sledding ride where people sit on the sledge and our musher is driving. But we also offer, like the other companies around here, the self-drive option, where you can drive the, uh, to drive the sledge yourself. But the ride option, this is suitable for everyone. It is uh, with the families, for the families with very small kids until very old people. And of course, for people who are, in some reason, uh, not confident to drive the sledge or unable to drive the sledge. So this, is, um, this makes it possible for everyone to enjoy the dog sledding. And then the program that I was mentioning before combined the program from two of these activities. You come in the evening, you have the Northern Lights program, you spend the night in our uh, tent. Uh, it's actually, we call it Lavu. Usually it is a common tent where you share with other people and in the morning you get breakfast, in the evening of course you get dinner, and then uh, after the breakfast you go dog sledding and you get the lunch as well. So this is the combined program. Today with this COVID of course, uh, we uh, also have to follow the guidelines what the Norwegian health authorities are giving us, and uh, we are looking into how safe it is to do uh, this, all these activities. So we are checking that there is enough space uh, between our musher who is driving the sledge and the guests who sit on the sledge. The other thing that we have to look into is before single travelers, they were able to share the same sledge. Today, it is not possible. So we are working with all these things at the moment to be ready uh, for all our international guests. Of course, uh, the same thing, like I said, the clothing is included. So all thermal suits, we have to put them um, uh, to 48 to 24 hours quarantine after they are being used. The, it means that it cuts down a little bit of our capacities. But like I said, we are working very hard on this one at the moment to be ready for the guests and may, we will make sure that everyone is safe and uh, we offer uh, the best quality service as usual. So it is all from my side, Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Anneli. That was uh, fantastic. Uh, I wish I knew about the program uh, to bring dogs home. I would uh, definitely have been there and picked up a few. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm getting a dog at the end of the month. So I'm, I'm getting, at least I get that. So that's good. <laughs> Take four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the next one uh, we're going to introduce is uh, from Puka Travel. It's Anton Heibel. He's the owner of Puka Travel, uh, CEO and founder. And uh, he's going to tell you a bit about his products um, and how they do the Norton Light Suns. So take it away. Sounds good. Uh, thank you very much, Max. Do you hear me? 
you can everyone. Okay, yeah, we are Phuket Travels. Uh, we uh, have a long background in maritime management. Uh, first of all, we've been working uh, with sailing boats in the Norwegian fjords for a few years, but also done maritime management uh, in different countries of the world before we um, opened up in Tromsø. We also function as a destination management uh, company uh, and have a little bit of a different role depending on what partners that we work with. Um, we uh, do Norton Lights in um, Tesla, as you can see on the pictures here. Uh, this has been one of our signature products where we've been trying to choose an eco-friendly way to go and see the Norton Lights and uh, also create an intimate setting in a small group capacity. Uh, we also uh, do our Norton Lights sailing on our two sailing catamarans, which we are very excited about and it's been one of the most popular products um, and most appreciated products uh, throughout uh, throughout the years. Um, now, as everybody, we have also had uh, some, some struggles coming out of the COVID um, uh, crisis, uh, but I believe we have done a relatively good job. This summer, um, we have been operating at a low capacity in Tromsø and Lofoten. Um, and it's actually been really great for us to um, get to know the Norwegian clients, which we haven't had a lot of uh, dialogue with before. And um, also to take the time to innovate um, our processes and our tour delivery internally to be even better for when international clients comes back. Um, and our ambitions, of course, is here to, to create as much of a safety uh, and COVID uh, you know, free zone as we possibly can. And um, there's uh, guidelines officially, but we're also looking ahead all the time to see what, what else can we do to implement if COVID tests are coming around. For example, we are looking to, um, uh, to bring uh, testing in-house as well as an extra measurement to uh, be really sure that when you're going on, on a tour or are with us for a few days, we can do what we can to, to keep you safe and healthy. Um, we're also um, uh, sort of looking to expand on packages and integrations with partners. So we're really happy with this um, collaboration with Aurora Zone. And we believe it's good that you book packages with one operator that can um, look after your entire journey and also give you a little bit of useful information so I think Matt's and, uh, and um, has done a great job here to, to set this, um, uh, this panel up and really excited to, to work with everybody. Uh, a big part for us is sustainability work as well. Um, and we actually look at COVID as a great opportunity to in improve on our sustainability work, both as a company and a destination. And uh, one of the great things about having so much time when there is less clients is that we can update our internal processes and um, uh, we have also refinanced the company in this process to be able to do um, some, some key updates. One of them is that we're moving uh, to uh, electrify propulsion on our boats, uh, taking that step this winter. So we're really excited to move in that direction. Um, but also um, uh, a lot of automation is being made and we're primarily using that automation in the sales process and in the collaboration with our partners so that we can free up more time for our support team so that they can do what humans are best to, which is looking after and caring for our, for our guests. So our overall ambition is to um, push forward on the sustainable uh, destination that we um, are proud to be part of. And um, also um, sort of as an overarching theme internally, we're talking about Tromsø as a destination and Norway as a whole is, um, is a very early destination and we believe that maybe we've seen 10 or 20 percent of what Tromsø could be in the future. So um, uh, we're excited to continue to uh, explore and we know that this winter will be a little bit different. Um, that actually can open up great opportunities for somebody to come and see uh, the whales and the fjords and the northern lights in a little bit of a less BC environment. So um, we're here and we're ready to do our part and um, very excited for this season to, that comes with all of the changes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anton. That was great. Uh, we were excited too uh, as well. And uh, I think that what you said there that one can come and uh, experience some parts of Tromsø that uh, in a different way because there's going to be less people. Uh, I think that's uh, key as well. Of course, 
one of the things Tromsø I feel always has been good on is that even though it's a small town and there's a lot of guests coming there, it's at least to me it never felt very crowded. So, but now you have the opportunity to to really feel uh, like you are just one with nature when you're out traveling. Um, and to go on with uh, out in nature, we're gonna finish off with uh, Matt Robinson. Um, he's an expert on Northern Lights and uh, a photography expert and an astronomer. So he's, his insight on uh, how the Northern Lights actually work um, compared to what I think, and I still think it's spirits in the sky. So <laughs> take it away, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Um, spirits in the sky, it, it's quite a nice thought. And going back to what Ali said at the start, I mean, I, I understand the, the processes behind why we see the Northern Lights. But when I'm watching them, I don't, I don't think about that because you can't. When you see these lights gracefully whispering across the sky and flashing, we've all seen them, you, you, you get spiritual, like Ali says. It, it, it's like otherworldly. It's, it's breathtaking. And I capture images of them, and it, it doesn't really do it justice to when you see them in person. So even before I even start telling everybody why we see them, I urge you to go and see them. I know they're on everybody's bucket lists. Don't just say it. Go and see them, and you'll never forget it. So, um, hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying uh, the webinar so far. Uh, thanks to Ali uh, and everyone at the on for letting me be a part of it. Uh, my name is Matt, um, not to be confused with Matt. Um, and I'm a photographer uh, and astronomer from the northeast of England. Uh, I was an astronomer in the UK for three years. Um, and then the Aurora Zone gave me the travel book, literally. Uh, in 2017, I worked uh, for one winter in Northern Finland, um, and it was just unforgettable. It absolutely blew me, blew me away, and uh, the memories just live with me every day, and that's why um, I'm an Aurora chaser now, definitely. Um, since then, I've gone on to work uh, as an astronomer and photographer in the Maldives for a few years, and in Chile. Um, but the Northern Lights has brought me back up north uh, and back up to Northern Norway. And it's in this region specifically where you increase your chances of seeing the Northern Lights. And the biggest tip to seeing the Northern Lights is put yourself in the position where you have more chance of seeing it. Um, and being up in Norway here along with the landscape, um, it just completely blown me away. So we'll talk a little bit about the Northern Lights. Um, like I said before, when looking to take this off your bucket list, location is generally the most important factor. Um, the further north you are, around the poles, the more chance you've got of seeing it, and we'll, we'll find out why. But also understanding the Northern Lights and, and why they happen um, also gives you a great advantage. So the journey of the Northern Lights starts at the sun. Um, so we'll do a little bit of astronomy. Uh, the sun is a huge ball of gas at the center of our solar system. We know it. Uh, the sun is a star, uh, one and the same thing, and we orbit around it on our beautiful uh, blue and green planet. Um, it appears in sunlight during the day, uh, and on an evening, if you're in the right location, it gives us these spectacular dancing lights. Uh, at the moment, on average, it sits around 93 million miles away from the Earth, so that is quite far to give you a little bit of sense of the real distance of that. That is about 38,750 round trips between Newcastle, which is a town on the coast of uh, the northeast of England, uh, where the Aurora Zone is based, and Tromso. So you'd have to go from Newcastle to Tromso and back again 38,000 times, nearly 40,000 times, and that will get you to the sun. So the distance is huge. Deep within the core of the sun, nuclear fusion reactions are occurring all of the time. And this continuously happens where hydrogen is fused into helium and it generates huge amounts of heat and light energy. And that gives the sun its massive temperatures of up to 27 million degrees in its core. That's huge. As we move out from the core, 
we get to the convective sun, and this is where the plasma heats up, uh, and it rises and cools at the surface. As it cools at the surface, it's then replaced by the hotter gas below it, and this is what we call convection. And we see this process all of the time at home. If you're heating up some water on the stove, that's why the water heats up, it gets hotter at the bottom, and rises to the top, cools as it touches the air, and then it's replaced again. And this is what we see on the sun. And it's this process, and with the heat alongside on the sun, that induces magnetism and gives the sun its magnetic field lines. And these are really important. The magnetic fields twist and turn continuously in the sun, and they build up every 11 years. And this is what gives us the sun's solar cycle. This is an important part of the sun. Um, you see an increase and decrease of activity on the sun over this time. Um, when it's weaker, when we apparently don't see as much activity on the sun, that doesn't mean you're not going to see the northern lights. Uh, we're just getting out of the solar minimum period now, uh, and I've seen the northern lights about four times this month already. Um, so solar minimum, maximum, you don't really need it too much. You're not not going to see the northern lights if you're in solar minimum. It's all about putting yourself in the north. The magnetic fields are important in whether you see the northern lights here in Norway. As the magnetic fields rise and poke through the surface of the sun, a sunspot is formed on that surface. And that's a cooler region of the sun. And that region often has polarity. So when you see an increase of sunspots on the sun, that's an indicator that we've reached kind of a solar maximum period. So previously to this, uh, in the last few years, there hasn't really been as many sunspots on the sun. Uh, and that's because we were in a solar minimum period. But if you follow the Aurora Zone and all the other providers up in this region, you'll see that just because of that. It doesn't mean they haven't seen the Northern Lights. They see them all the time. They really do. It's over these sunspots that we see the magnetic fields protruding from the sun. And it's in these magnetic fields that charged particles get caught and they build up over a few days. The charged particles are part of the solar wind and this is a stream of particles that is continuously being thrown away from the sun in all directions. Um, we call it the solar wind because it, it blows slow and it blows fast. Uh, it can also be quite dense and it's these kind of factors of it that we look for to predict the northern lights to give us some sort of forecast of it. A fast and dense solar wind is something that I would get quite excited about, but I'm a bit of a nerd. Um, it gets to a point in these magnetic field lines that are protruding over the sunspots that the amount of particles within them fills it full of energy. There's a lot of pressure within that. And as it increases and it increases, the magnetic field line can stretch and stretch and stretch, and then it'll get to a point where it'll snap. When that magnetic field line snaps, all the charged particles within it, a lot of them, will fly out into space. A lot of them will fall back to the sun because of the sun's gravitational influence on the area around it, but a lot of them will fly out into space. And it's these that we want to be heading towards the Earth. They can be potentially dangerous toward the Earth, so we, we don't really want a huge um, coronal mass ejection, as we call it heading towards the Earth, but it's these huge eruptions of mass from the sun that generate the northern lights within our atmosphere. It's the interaction between these particles uh, and the atmosphere of the Earth that give us the dancing lights that we see here. It takes around two to three days for these charged particles to leave the sun and get to the Earth. So that gives you two to three days to plan where are you going to take pictures. What are your settings going to be? Clothing, where are you going to go? Look at the weather forecast, everything like that. Once the particles reach the Earth, they are funneled down the Earth's magnetic fields. So the Earth has magnetic fields, which are generated from its outer inner core. And these magnetic fields protrude from the North and South Pole, the magnetic northern southerly poles. And that's why we see the northern lights at the North Pole and the South Pole. We don't see them around the equator. We only see them in the North and South. As the particles are filtered down the magnetic field lines, they fly into the atmosphere and they collide with 
oxygen and nitrogen particles, uh, molecules within the Earth's atmosphere. So when they collide with them, they fill them full of energy. And these molecules don't like to be filled full of energy. They jump up a few energy levels and it's not their ground state. It's not where they're comfortable being. So they'll release this energy in a wavelength of light. And that's the light that we see is the Northern Lights. So when you get oxygen and the collisions with oxygen, you will see the red and the green of the Northern Lights, the red and the green colors. And this is generally the most common color we'll see. You'll see this generally every other night up here. If, it, if it's clear here in the north of Norway, I would expect to see it. Uh, so this is most common, the, the reds and the greens. The blues and the purples, this is what you'll see when we have a dense storm, when you have a large coronal mass ejection or a strong solar wind or a combination of them both. But it's these lights that we'll see that we call the northern lights or the aurora borealis. You do get the southern lights and the aurora australis, but they are less well seen less known because there's not many regions around the southern pole that can see them it's generally only the penguins and researchers that are living on Antarctica the reason northern Norway is a fantastic region for seeing the northern lights is because here small geomagnetic storms are more visible when you get stronger geomagnetic storms these um, charged particles the denser streams that collide in the atmosphere of the earth when it's stronger they'll be visible further south so they'll be visible from the uk sometimes france things like that but more common you don't you don't get this you don't get these large storms as often as you do the smaller storms so the reason the northern hemisphere and particularly here in the tromso region is great to see the northern lights is because we see the most nights because you don't need these strong storms there'll be a build-up of charged particles within the Earth's atmosphere where there'll be a surge of them at some point during the night which will get you those dancing lights. So the great part of the North is you, you don't need a huge geomagnetic storm, generally you don't need a strong solar wind, you'll just need a build-up of particles within the magnetic field which generally is building up all of the time. After that you just need clear skies, that's all you need. Um, so up here for me personally it, it resonates with me northern norway in the tromso region it's completely blown me away um the the mountains that just drop straight down into this beautiful turquoise water in some regions it's i lived in maldives for a few years and it's straight out of maldives but you've got snow-capped mountains and you've got the turquoise waters and, it, and it's just i've fallen in love with it instantly. It is a, an incredible place to see it. Um, over the next slide is a, a collection of videos that I've made during my time in Finland uh, with the Rover Zone. And that, then after that are a few images and videos of the first Aurora's of the season here in Norway. So the, um, the season starts around September time. We can generally see it from around the 16th uh, of August time, a little bit further onwards, and then it'll go all the way through to April. Um, so it's a very long season, and as we get into the winter period, where it's dark a lot of the time, you get a few hours of daylight in the middle of winter, which is fun, um, there's more chance of seeing the northern lights. So again, to reiterate what I said at the start, if you want to see the northern lights, knowledge is good, but location is top of the list. If you put yourself in the location, you've got more chance of seeing it. And you're not going to see it sitting at home. You've got to go for it. So take it off the bottom list. Go for it. And you'll never forget it, I promise. Um, so thanks for sticking with me through that. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'd like to hand back to Ali to close. Thank you. Thanks very much, Matt. Um, Thank you everybody for a fascinating insight into both the Northern Lights and into what we do up in Tromsø, in beautiful Tromsø. Um, I'm sort of urging, I'm itching to come back now. It's been, a, it's been quite a while actually. Um, and what Matt was saying, last time I was there, I was giving a talk to various tourism providers up there. Um, and I was preparing sort of my lecture, if you like, in the hotel. And 
it was dark until about 11 o'clock in the morning and then it got light till about one o'clock and I looked out the window and suddenly it was dark again, um, which is all a bit weird, but it certainly creates loads of chances and loads of that darkness that you need to see the Northern Lights. Um, just going back to something that Matt said early on about the Vikings, um, I, I couldn't resist, I don't know if you guys have seen um, a TV show called Norseman. Um, it's filmed, I think you call it Viking Gang, Viking Gang or something in Norway. And it's filmed by Norwegians. It's on Netflix. Um, it's filmed by Norwegians in Norwegian, and then they do it in English. Um, and it's just the funniest thing on TV. Um, so if you want to look at a sort of really dry, funny look at Norwegian humor in English about the Vikings, I could not recommend Norseman enough. It is absolutely fantastic. So I have, to, I have to agree on that, actually. It's, it's, it's just so yeah. funny, Matt. Honestly, my son and I, I mean, we must have watched it 20 times each series, and we just sort of quote Norsemen at each other all the time. I mean, some of the humour is just so, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, some of it's pretty basic, but um, yeah, it's, yeah my Archie, Archie and I were just constantly back and forwards. I'm Orm, he'll be Rufus or somebody, <laughs> um, and it's just fantastic. Um, but back to business, um, we did promise you some offers for sticking with us until the end. And for the current season, I think the important thing again to stress is that if you do book by yourself before the 24th of September and we cannot run the trips because of COVID or what have you, we will give you a refund uh, we'll, if you want to cancel up to 14 days before departure. There will be no quibbles on that. We're also offering 10% um, off our you, uh, Norway trips uh, to Tromsø uh, for this season. And for next season, I can understand, I think we can all understand if you're a bit reticent about traveling this winter, yeah, just, there's so much uncertainty and we all understand that. So for next winter, we're also knocking off 10% of all of our pre-sale rates, um, which you'll find on the website. Um, and again, we will have flexible date changes up to 30 days prior to departure. There's some uh, question about subject to availability, but at this stage, um, you know, it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Um, and similarly, we'll have free cancellation up to 14 days prior. All you need to know, the secret code is webinar 10, webinar 10. Um, that's all you need to do when you talk to us or email us or however you contact us. Mention that and you will get that 10% discount and those guarantees on the refund. Um, that is basically that, I think. We've kind of come to the end. We're going to have a question and answer session, but we've had a lot of questions which have been answered while we were doing the chat. Um, so essentially, if you do have any questions, please send them to us. And our guys are going to be in the office from 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, and we will be covering and answering in as much detail as we possibly can. So all that remains for me to say is once again, thank you to the guys in Norway. Thank you so much to everybody who has been watching us. And we wish you a very pleasant evening and we hope to see you in Tromsø in the not too distant future. Stay well, everybody. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm going to take uh, a question here live, just so uh, it's done. Um, Don Porridge, you have a uh, question to Matt. Um, so I'm gonna, um, Matt, are you ready for a question? Yeah, I can take a question. Yeah. Uh, Matt, fascinating presentation. Which do you prefer to view the Northern Lights, Northern Norway or Finland and why? Oh, Don, oh, I might have to get political on this one and give a, give a real generalized answer. Um, so, Finland is very close to my heart because that's where I went with Eurovision uh, and it was my first kind of taste of freedom out of the UK, uh, although being in my late 20s um, at the time, I was kind of a, a late starter to travel and, and things. So Finland is a place I'll, I'll never forget and I saw some absolutely breathtaking displays of the Northern Lights there. Um, but Norway for me... Um, as well as being uh, Northern Norway, Tromsø region, as well as being a fantastic place to see the Northern Lights, the, the landscape, I'm still, I'm living in it now, and it just is absolutely taking my breath away. 
Uh, I've been on a few, if you like, hiking. There are some hikes where it, it would take you a few hours to get to the top of a, of a mountain that is only a few thousand meters, maybe a few hundred meters and thousand meters, sorry. And the scenery is unbelievable. Um, so tying with seeing the Northern Lights there in the fjords, um, it's breathtaking. And the seasons here, um, if you're from the UK, the seasons are, are pretty average. They, they roll by quite often and, and you'll, they're quite steady. Here, they're at a thousand percent. The, the volume's turned up. So when it's autumn, as we're seeing it is now, it's autumn, it's deep orange, yellow colors. When it's winter, it's dark, it's cold, it's exciting. Um, so for me, tying the, the crazy seasons that we get up here with the Northern Lights and then the breathtaking scenery of Norway, um, I, that's why I prefer, prefer Norway. And that was the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question from Rob. Um, it's a two-part question, and uh, I think I'll take this one myself. Uh, best time to come uh, from September, April, where we experience winter, but not god-awful freezing. Can't st stand outside cold. I'm going to go back to what I said earlier in the presentation. Uh, there's no such thing in Norway as bad weather, only bad clothes. So the good thing about winter is that if you dress up in warm clothes, you don't actually feel it anymore. So, but there are, of course, days where it's more stable. I would say that um, if it's cold and there's a lot of wind, then you really feel that it's cold. So on stable days, uh, I would say January, February, it, probably where it's most stable uh, and but then again it, it is cold in north of Norway so you can expect that and question number two are there tours uh, slash chance of ice fishing in Norway yes there are uh, and if you go into one of the packages on Aurora Zone they have a tab called personalize so you can contact them and personalize your uh, your trip to make changes to activities and we can definitely fix so you can try out ice fishing. That's no problem. All right, there was no more questions right now. I think that was it. Yeah, I think that's the last of the questions, Matt. Um, yeah. again, thanks guys, have a great evening. Um, we'll bring it to a close.